Direct trade between European nations and China began in the 16th century, but European nations could only enter Canton in southern China and deal with the Kohong, a group of Chinese merchants. Plus, Chinese products, in particular tea, was only sold for silver and this created a trade deficit during the 18th century for the Europeans. So, to counter this imbalance, the British East India Company began to sell Indian-grown opium to the Chinese. Due to bribes and taxes, Chinese officials initially tolerated the trade. However, by the 1830s, there were millions of alex and the flow of silver had reversed in Britain's favour. So, in 1839, the Daoguang Emperor tasked Lin Zhishu with clamping down on the trade. Lin quickly closed off the routes to Canton, blockading the British within the city, and boarded British merchant vessels. The British merchants were told by their own government to hand over the opium in exchange for promised reparations. Lin went ahead and destroyed the opium and reopened trade with the British, but tried to get the merchants to sign a guarantee against trading in opium or risk facing death. Although some traders were willing to oblige, the British government, who now favoured free trade, refused to acknowledge this agreement and believed that the Chinese should compensate their traders. So, in November 1839, the Royal Navy fired warning shots at a British merchant vessel which was trying to trade with China. The Chinese deployed ships to protect the vessel, but were subsequently crushed by the technologically superior British Navy. Then, despite many in the British government arguing against the opium trade on moral grounds, the British declared war on China in January 1840, seeking to restore prestige and enforce free trade. By June, a British naval force had blockaded the Pearl River in the south, while another sailed north to demand compensation from the Qing dynasty. This fleet was easily able to capture Chusan and Tianjin on the coast and relay their demands onto the emperor. The Chinese tried to negotiate peace in late 1840, but the British demands of reparations, secession of an island and the opening of more ports for trade proved to be too much. So, in January 1841, the British attacked, won a quick victory at Chunpei, and threatened Canton itself. The new governor of Guangdong agreed to give Britain Hong Kong, then a relatively uninhabited island, but this was rejected by the emperor, forcing the British to intensify their war effort once again. After accepting money from the officials of Canton in exchange for a truce, the British sailed north and, over the next year, took a series of coastal cities. The Chinese finally had to admit defeat, give in to British demands, and sign the Treaty of Nanjing. Five cities were opened up to foreign trade, reparations were paid, opium continued to be sold, and Hong Kong was ceded to Britain. Following the First War, China was forced to sign a series of unequal treaties with Western powers, and the knock to prestige led to a series of uprisings. However, Britain still sought more from China, such as the legalization of opium and the opening of all of China to merchants, so they looked for a reason to go to war. Finally, in 1856, the Chinese crew on the Arrow, a ship which was registered in Hong Kong, were arrested on charges of smuggling, thus giving the British a cause for war. In November, in the Pearl River, the Chinese once again lost to the British, and they made matters worse for themselves by firing upon American ships, forcing the US to retaliate militarily, albeit briefly. However, the British momentum was lost due to a rebellion in India, but in the meantime, the British did manage to gain the support of the French. Hostilities resumed in late 1857, when the Western Allies quickly captured Canton. Then, in May 1858, they bombarded the Taku forts in the north and occupied Tianjin, forcing the new Xianfeng Emperor to the negotiating table. As part of the peace, more cities were opened to foreign merchants, and Beijing would open diplomatic legations for the British, Americans and French. However, a year after signing the treaty, the Western powers received word that the Emperor was going to deny them entry to Beijing to set up their legations. So the Allies attacked Taku Forts once again, but this ended in a humiliating defeat for the Westerners due in large part to attacking at low tide. Unprepared to suffer the loss of prestige, they attacked again and captured the forts in August 1860. The Allies then advanced on Beijing, but the envoys who marched ahead of the armies were imprisoned and tortured by the Chinese. Angered, the Allies forced their way into Beijing and burnt the Summer Palace to the ground in October. The Chinese quickly signed the Convention of Peking, promising more freedom to foreigners. After the war, the Allies did lend the Qing Dynasty support in crushing the ongoing Taiping Rebellion, and many Western advisors were sent to help the Chinese during their much-needed modernization of their military. But the Opium Wars will be remembered as the start of China's century of humiliation, a hundred years of rebellions and lost wars.